talking about the different specializations in the graduate md program could you take us through some of the interesting specializations available uh, specialization is in the form of a residency which is even though it's your specialization or your post grad it, it basically involves you working in that department uh, now your residency can be in several departments so you can have a uh, surgery so general surgeon or in medicine you can have internal medicine emergency medicine and family medicine and you also have slightly more specific ones like you can pick um, OBGY or pediatrics or ophthalmology okay so even at the postgrad level there's a wide field of choices and under each of these fields further after your residency you can do a fellowship which is your sub specialization okay. which under each of these gives you a further specialization option okay so how many years is all of this say post the 5 and a half years uh how many years is the residency the md the fellowship uh this it depends a lot on what you pick to do okay. but residencies are generally anywhere between 3 years to 7 years okay uh, some of the general surgery ones are extremely long are like 7 years yeah, okay so they take you between 5 to 7 and okay. then your fellowship is generally between 2 to 3 years so you're looking at anything between 5 to 10 years after your undergrad studies to finish oh, to the end okay. of your education so you've got like 5 and a half years sitting here You've got anything between five oh, years yeah. to ten years, and you possibly have a gap between the two. Uh, no, it's faced in such a way that maybe you'll have a six-month gap because okay. five and a half to the normal right. system. But right, right. So we could be looking at a sixteen-year career post your schooling. Yeah, you could yeah? be. Okay, tell me. I mean, it was a lot of credit to you for working so hard. <laughs> But tell me, uh, there is a notion that there are limitations to the number of seats available at the graduate school program in India. How true is that? Uh, that's true because um, you have very few good government institutions in in the state, and under each specialization or residency in these colleges, your seats are not only limited, but a large chunk of these seats gets counted as say quota seats. Uh, after you give your post grad entrance test, the seats available to you are extremely limited under under the field. Right, right. So if you've got like 550 like you said at the undergrad level, how little does that uh, count? Uh, each sort of specialization say in a particular college say minus 200 students at an undergrad level. Right. But each specialization would have say between 15, 10, 15 seats only available on open oh. category on a post grad. Okay. So what are the options available for a student who's done their MBBS in India? If you plan to stop your education there, you can be a general family physician, but your main options come in your residency in India or abroad. Right. So your options to go abroad include the United States, UK and Canada. Okay. Generally most people go to the United States because uh, you have greatest opportunity there in terms of getting the field that you want to go to. and you have to choose that also quite early because the entrance exams for each different one are right. very different sure and they require a lot of preparation which goes on simultaneously with your medicine which is hectic as it is oh my god so you have to make an early decision so you can study throughout and be prepared at the right time and the postgraduate program in the US is also about 10 years or is it longer uh no it's about the same But again, it varies from country to country because um, a, a, so the same surgery residency, which would be say three years in the US, could easily be five years in the UK. The process of applying to the US, in my experience, usually tends to be very complicated. How does it work for the MD program? Uh, the process of applying to the US is actually very complicated. There are a lot of steps to go through. Uh, like during your course, before you start the internship. You have to do this one or two months rotation in a hospital in the U.S., which is called an elective. Okay. For which you have to get your TOEFL score, and they have vaccine page requirements, and you have to go through a lot of procedure. And then you apply to an institution where you go, and for two months you're working in a department in their hospital. Okay. And this elective process is important for your application to get into a good hospital, and this is your major cost in the applying process. Like applying for your elective and the whole staying cost and everything can come up to say 15 lakhs. Oh, okay. So this is where the major cost of your application goes. And then after that, the entrance test for the US is called US MLE, which is a multi-step uh, exam. But your first step, it's the most important step. It's called step one, mm-hmm. which uh, assesses you on an MCQ basis on all the subjects that you've studied up to this point and a few additional ones. And when you're applying to get into a residency program. Your step one score is the absolute most important consideration. Oh, okay. And okay. it's a it's an exam that you can give only once. You have no no second attempts. Oh. You have okay. to give this one time and not again. 
and uh, step two of USMLE is based on your clinical knowledge and clinical skills uh, which is clinical skills and knowledge are separate so you can give one of the exams here but the second exam you have to travel to the United States where okay. they hire actors as patients okay and you have to take your like history and do the whole clinical <laughs> procedure on them okay. and they assess you there and that's okay. only a pass fail exam okay and the third step is not necessary to apply so you can give the third step after you go there then having got your scores you have to pick an institution in your in your order of priority and you go into a computer and they have this specific date called a matching day okay each institution will have your application letters and they'll also put students in order of priority and as will you for the hospitals and the course you want to get into and then if you match the computer matches you then you absolutely have to go there it's a legal obligation you right. can't back out of where the oh. computer matches you too okay. and just in case you maybe over stated your claim and you don't get matched you have a second day option where you can just modify and apply again but the whole process is a long drawn thing and you have to have decided it from the start of your third year and it takes you till the end of internship to complete all the formalities and oh exams and everything. Oh my god, wow. So you really need to decide early, early. in school, you need to yeah. decide early during your MBBS. So that's a lot of planning yeah, and foresight. You have to plan early. <laughs>
for your degree to be accepted and you'd be able to work in the US. But until a while back, say 10 to 15 years, you actually had to repeat parts of the course again there. So we've made uh, good progress in that case. There was that one lesson that you learned that you want to share with us. What would that be? So uh, most lessons in medicine actually come only when you're in the ward at your, at your clinical posting time. So this is when I was at the start of my third year. So there was this one particular older male patient who had tuberculosis. He was an active case and he had come with heart problems. Oh. So he was very irritable, he was not cooperative, he was very uncomfortable. And these students moved on to another one so that the teacher can come and teach. But there was this one particular final year student who he just sat with the patient in general and you know he spoke to him like about his general day to day, his life and then the patient just opened up, told him about his kids, his problems oh. and his demeanor just changed completely. He was so grateful, he was cooperative. And that really stuck with me that we're treating the patient and not the disease. Right. So as a clinician, it's very important to consider the human being first. Wow, that's such an amazing lesson to learn. And as a doctor, yeah. probably a lifetime. So at the, at the start of most years, like you're not in an exam period, you can afford to go out say once or twice a week maybe. But in general, it's very important to have something that you like to keep you going. Like in my case, it's football. So every week, I can go out with friends and catch this one game and it completely refreshes me. So even though it's, you can't really have so much of a social life, say four times a month-ish, you can head out. But it's very important to have something to yeah. carry you through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And tell us the one fun experience you've had during this period. <laughs> in medicine, being in a hospital, you... Like you have to pick small joys most of the time as like small wins but uh, if I had to pick my fun experience it was at the start of second year which is extremely early during the course when um, I was allowed to stand in and observe a surgery in the operation theatre. Wow. So we were given all the scrubs and everything and I got to go in and watch an appendicectomy operation actually happen and the surgeon was, was really nice in that he was like explaining to us what he's doing and showing it, showing it to us on the monitor. And at that point, it was just really cool to be able to see this so early on. Oh, well, your idea of fun is a bit different from mine. <laughs> but I'm sure it sounds like a fun experience. So thank you so much. But you know, you really helped us decode this, this little mysterious and very exciting profession. So thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Okay. Please click the subscribe button below. Like me at facebook.com slash chatchat101. Follow my Twitter handle, ChatChat101, or at Instagram, ChatChat101. Please leave your comments in the sections below. And if you'd like me to feature any particular college, please let me know. Thank you.